ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Roman's Movie Reviews, where I, Roman RBC, will be talking to you about movie reviews, some editorials, but this week we're going to be talking about Zack Snyder and his most recent short film, Snow Steam Iron, and we're going to be talking about his upcoming film, Justice League, which is set to be released on November 17th, 2017, and I'm kind of excited, maybe, possibly, the title's already given it away, but anyways, um, Snow Steam Iron is a short film that Zack Snyder has been working on since he stepped away from Justice League earlier this year. It was shot entirely on an iPhone, and if you've seen the film, you would not believe it was shot on an iPhone unless you already knew that going in. When I watched it, I was like, wow, this movie looks like it was made on a ginormous budget and shot with one of the most high-end cameras you can find in the industry. But then to find out it was shot on an iPhone, not even an iPhone X because it hasn't been released yet, and that f phone is apparently going to be able to shoot 4K, whatever it is, and I was like, wow, that is incredible. Not only is that incredible, but the movie itself, four and a half minutes, no dialogue, not a single word uttered, not a single letter. The movie does a really good job, and I, I'm a fan of Zack Snyder. Everyone knows that I'm a fan of Zack Snyder and the things that he does and what he tries to accomplish. He is one of the purest forms of a visionary working today in Hollywood. So... With the short film, I see a film where he is saying, and it's nothing deep, nothing super thematic, it's pretty simple stuff, but I believe that he's saying that there is a corrupt system in New York, because it takes place in New York, there's a corrupt system in New York, and New York could basically resemble any part of the country, right? So he's basically saying that New York specifically in this scenario, but... Overall, it kind of means the rest of the country is corrupt. So what he's saying is that it's corrupt and that they're beating on this woman and they're taking advantage of her. And the movie is ultimately about her fighting back against her oppressors in self-defense, yet still getting the blame and going to jail for her actions. And I think that's pretty important overall. I mean, Zack Snyder has always done a pretty good job to me anyways, of being able to capture these underlying themes and messages with very little dialogue. He takes the form filmmaking and tells a story through filmmaking, through imagery, visuals, uh, expressions on characters' faces, the way they act, react to scenarios. And I think that in this movie, if Denis Villeneuve did not exist... Um, Zack Snyder would probably be the best shot selector we have working in Hollywood. Some of the shots he has in this movie are just tremendous. Um, you should definitely check it out. It's on his Vero account. Unfortunately, you'd only be able to watch it on mobile. So just get on your phone, download the app. If you have pretty good internet, it's going to go lickety split. And go to Zack Snyder's account, watch the video, delete the app if you don't want to use it. Maybe it'll make you want to use the app more. Um, but yeah, you should definitely check it out. I really liked it. It's one of the better movies I've seen this year, uh, better than about 90% of the movies I've seen this year, and Zack Snyder, I really hope he tackles more original projects, because he clearly has an eye, he clearly has ideas, um, and kind of showcases what you can do with a couple friends and an iPhone on a weekend. Um, anyways, so, concerning Justice League, now, I love Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, Wonder Woman, and don't really like Suicide Squad. Alright? Justice League, obviously, first time we're ever going to see these heroes in live action on the big screen together. I have been waiting for this ever since the Justice League animated series in the early 2000s. I have been dying for this. And, unfortunately... As a fan, a big, 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 big diehard fan, I might be the biggest fan of Batman v Superman you could find. Might be the biggest fan of Man of Steel you could find. It's the reason I love movies. It's the reason I got into the technicalities of what makes a movie a movie. But I'm just not excited for Justice League anymore. It's unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. Because 
I believe in Zack Snyder as a filmmaker, and I understand he's a very divisive. He doesn't really click with a lot of people, and that's fine, and that's okay. Different strokes for different folks. But when he stepped away due to the tragic incident with his daughter committing suicide and him having to work with that hanging over his head for such a long time, it's going to take a toll on you. So he stepped away, and... He's like, it's best for me. And I applauded him for that. That is a really big deal to step away from such a monumental, potentially game-changing project in Justice League and then having to hand the reins over to somebody else. And that somebody else is Joss Whedon, director of both Avengers films, Avengers and Avengers Age of Ultron. It is no secret that if you know me, I don't like Avengers. Avengers Age of Ultron is okay, and I don't like Joss Whedon as a filmmaker. Keyword filmmaker. I haven't seen any of his TV stuff, so I can't comment on that. But as a filmmaker, I don't like what he has to bring to the table. It doesn't suit my tastes as a film goer. Whereas with Zack Snyder, I feel more attached to his works because he speaks to me as a film goer. So when it was announced that he came on, I was at first I was like, ah, don't know how I feel about this because even if you got someone that was like Zack Snyder as a director to come in and fill in those shoes, there's really no way that you can say, oh, they're, they're the same visions. It's impossible because no two directors have the same vision for something. It's just not possible. So upon hearing Whedon's arrival, I was pretty bummed out because his vision clashes so much with Snyder's. In terms of what their sensibilities and what they bring to the table and what they try to accomplish um, in their, you know, ensemble films. But then it was announced that Zach and Whedon had collaborated on scenes and Josh was just going to come in and do the reshoots for Zach's scenes that they've collaborated on together. The problem with that is, as directors, what they do is they take words on a script and visualize them, right? Whedon and Snyder are very different filmmakers. So let's say that there's a discussion between Flash and Batman, right? Whedon might shoot that one way, but Snyder would shoot it entirely different. Just because it's words on a paper doesn't mean they're going to shoot it the exact same way. And that's the most important part to remember here because Zack Snyder is a filmmaker that just is very ambitious. He doesn't really do things the same way every time. I know people like to think he does, but he really doesn't. And I just get worried that we're going to get a mixture of the Zack Snyder Justice League vision, and then when if the reshoots even make the cut. Who knows? These reshoots might not even make the cut of the movie, the final cut anyways, and mix that with Whedon's cut or vision of Justice League, we could run into some issues. So we have that. And, you know, up until that point, I was like, okay, you know, I'm a little worried now. I'm a little less excited because I wanted to see Zack's vision fully realized with the Justice League. And to hop off that, then we get an announcement that Junkie XL is stepping away. Um, or I don't know if he was fired per se, or he just kind of was let go. Um, and then Danny Elfman came in. Kind of an upgrade. I love Junkie XL. I think he is an incredible composer. His score for Mad Max Fury Road is to die for. Danny Elfman, though, legend. All-time great. A great, 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 great orchestrator. Right? But then this kind of goes back to the problem I've been having with the production overall for the film is that Whose vision is it? Because when you look, think about Junkie XL and his scores with Batman v Superman and with Mad Max Fury Road, Deadpool even, it kind of suits Zack's style a little bit more. And then when you think about Danny Elfman, his scores, while amazing, that Spider-Man theme, the Batman theme, other themes, fit more in line with Whedon's style of directing. Okay. Now, when we're talking about the production of the movie, I believe firmly that as a lover of film scores, 
that the composer is the last person we should be worrying about when getting excited for a movie because a composer, they take scenes and they just compose scores for them by what they see on screen. And technically, in a lot of ways, composers are a lot like directors. Just because we see Flash and Batman talking doesn't mean that Danny Elfman and Junkie XL are going to compose the same type of score. They may do a completely different score. And, you know, it's a little worrisome to see two different types of composers come in after the switch at the director's chair, right? On top of that, we've got a bunch of stories coming out from WB. We're making this movie. Flashpoint movie. This movie, that movie, Gotham City Sirens, Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn, uh, Teen Titans, whatever. And now it just makes me wonder... What are you trying to accomplish with Justice League? I believe it's going to be about the rebirth of Superman and Superman finally being able to give that title of Beacon of Hope. We've been leading up to that since Man of Steel. And hopefully we're able to get that in the way that I hope we do. At the, in the, at the quality, I hope we do. But upon hearing all these news stories about a bunch of different films being made from WB and Flashpoint possibly being the reset button they may need if Justice League fails or if they just Flashpoint it all together. What's going on? Not to mention that we've got endless news cycles every single day, 24-7. Justice League is garbage. Reshoots, reshoots, reshoots. It's a mess. Why are they still reshooting with like 40 days left? Now we know that actors are really hard to bring back when they're busy, busy actors. Gal Gadot is busy now because of Wonder Woman. Jason Momoa is busy now because he's Jason Momoa. Ezra Miller is an amazing talent. He's busy. We've also got Ray Fisher who's coming off of Broadway. He's probably still got some plays to do in New York. But it's just this overwhelming, frustrating amount of news that has literally taken the hype train and made it come to a screeching halt for me. I am going to be there Thursday night at 7 p.m. unless I get an early screening. Hell, I may even go to the early screening if I get a pass and go see it again if it's that good on Thursday night at 7 p.m. Using my own money to, su to support the film. I can't wait for this because I just want this to end. I want it to be over. Is the movie good? Is it bad? What is it? And if it's good, if it's good, Josh Whedon is going to get a lot of credit. Maybe more so than Zack Snyder. If it's bad, Zack Snyder is going to get a lot of the hate. And Whedon will just get brushed off the shoulder. And that's just the truth of the matter. People like to th think that's not going to happen, but it's implicit biases that I have, you have, we all have. That's just the fact of the matter. Now, whether you want to own up to that is up to you. I've already owned up to it. I have an implicit bias against Joss Whedon. It's true. I have an implicit bias with Zack Snyder. It's true. We all have our biases. We wouldn't be film fans and get excited for certain things if we didn't have biases. But I think as a huge fan of previous installments of this universe and as a huge fan of Justice League, the characters, the comic books, I can't really get excited. And it bums me out. I know a lot of my peers that agree with me, they're bummed out because they're not as excited as they should be either. It's because we're just so overwhelmed by this storm of what is truth, what is false, we don't know, can November 17th please hurry up. Thank you. Anyways, that's all I have to talk about today. I ran a little bit longer than I uh, expected, but when you kind of get into a little bit of a rant mode, you kind of lose track of time. Um, maybe I should just rename the channel Roman's Rant Reviews or Roman's Rants or whatever else. Maybe that can be a segment. Maybe that can be like a little subplot. Whatever it is. 
But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Are you excited for Justice League still? Are you not excited be for the same reason I'm not really excited anymore? What did you think of Snow Steam Iron? Go ahead and check it out on the Vero app. It's an amazing, amazing short film. One of my favorites of the year. Um, also, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos. I might have another video coming out soon w regarding Arrival and its place uh, or its relevance to things going on today. Um, I haven't committed to that idea entirely yet, um, but wait and see. Anyways, I have more reviews coming in. I'll probably do a video review for American Made this weekend. I'm seeing it Thursday night. And uh, you can check me out on Roman's Movie Reviews. I have my reviews for Lego Ninjago and Kingsman Up. I love Kingsman The Secret Service. Lego Ninjago, not so much. But you can also check me out at geeksandgamers.com where I'll be writing an article um, for next week regarding 80s movies in honor of Blade Runner 2049. This is Roman signing off. Have a wonderful rest of your day.